Shanali, why is he the uh, why is he going to be the new CFO? What has this guy got to offer that others others don't? What does it signal about the direction of travel? At Goldman Sachs. Certainly. You see musical chairs again over at Goldman Sachs. Stephen Scher stepping down, certainly a big deal. When he had come into this position at CFO, it was an early move, right as David Solomon was named CEO. He really helped execute a lot of the strategy and plan. Now, Dennis Coleman, global co head of global financing, is going to be stepping into that role. Another investment banking a veteran, financing in particular. We see Goldman really leading in the financing universe. I also want to mention another big move as this is made. We have Beth Hammock, who is one of Goldman's most senior women, stepping into Dennis's role. It's unclear, according to my sources, whether she will be remaining as chair of TBAC, which is the Treasury Borrowing Advisory Committee. It's what Liz Capo McCormick at Bloomberg likes to call the Treasury's bond whisperers. <laughs> so she's a very important person in the market and certainly at Goldman Sachs taking a new role. And Shalane, before we let you go, New York Times having a piece out that Elizabeth Warren is asking the Fed to break up Wells Fargo. Wow. So this is interesting. It's as, of course, we know they've gotten another regulatory penalty just as they were looking like they were turning the curve here. I also want to mention, in addition to this report by the New York Times, Elizabeth Warren sending this letter to Jerome Powell. You also have last week Senate Banking Committee Chairman Sherrod Brown saying, you know, Wells Fargo's, the new fines show that the bank is too large to manage. So you have that scrutiny from regulators and lawmakers piling on Wells Fargo, but it's unclear what this means for Charlie Scharf's turnaround, though it does propose complications.